So this is a short tutorial on how to process C star FITS file images in Serial 1.2. Um, firstly, you've got to save the FITS file from the telescope onto your computer's hard drive. So I've saved it in this folder here. It'll be called something like stacked and then the object name. Then within Serial, click on the home button and find that folder, which is that folder there and click on open and that sets your working directory. The next thing I want to do is actually open the folder file. So we click on the stacked and there we have our image. Um, it's very green. That is to be expected. I'm currently in the auto stretch view and I'm currently in the linked auto stretch view or chained. So we'll unlink that to see a better approximation of the colors. And you can see we've got some sort of background banding and so on, which is undesirable. But the first thing I want to do is do image information, image plate solve, just to ensure that Cyril recognizes what object it's processing. Once that's complete, you can click on the show object names to, to see that it's definitely identified the objects. The next thing I like to do is crop the image because I'm going to process this as a square image. So I right click, do selection one to one, and then drag a box as big as it will go and center it on the object. And then do right click and crop. Now, if you don't want to do that step, you don't have to. Um, it's just the way I choose to present my final image. And there we're seeing the image looking reasonably, reasonably good, but that is currently auto stretched. First thing I want to do is do a background extraction. So we do background extraction, generate, which generates all these red boxes, which is what it's going to use to work out any background uh, distortions. And we can then do a compute background. Now you'll see that that's actually generated some color banding. If I clear the boxes, you can see the color banding that's appeared. Um, that's undesirable. So we'll then generate again this time add dither i'll undo the previous background extraction and redo our crop and then go back into background extraction generate and this time i'm adding dither and compute background and apply so that's got rid of the the sort of the color banding in the background so that was step four background extraction next one we want to make sure the colors are calibrated and the best way is to get the computer to do that. So we go to color calibration, photometric color calibration. Again, all of these parameters are filled in for us. You just click on OK. And that will have, you'll see down here, it says ready, which means it's completed the color calibration. The next thing we can do is do a bit of noise reduction on this if it needs it. I'm not sure it does, but we'll give it a try. Um, again, I use the default settings and click on apply. That is very undesirable. That obviously didn't need that level of denoising. So I will close that and I will undo that step. I could try deconvolution instead. So we do deconvolution and again we'll accept all the standard settings and do apply. Now this is a more uh, intelligent way of it processing and again that looks quite a pleasing result okay so we're still in our auto stretch view if we switch back to our linear view uh, we don't actually see much at all because our image is only using up the very low end of the the signal that's in the the image so having switched to linear view what i want to do is split out the stars so i can process them separately so i go to star processing star net star removal i click pre-stretch linear image and also select generate star mask and execute now what this does is identify where all the stars are remove them from the image and leave us with a starless image of just the nebula uh, and that's been saved so what i actually like to do is work on the stars first so i will open up the star mask and we'll do a, a basic stretch on this. I like to use generalized hyperbolic 
and here in here I will select the modified arc sine h transform and it will need quite a bit of stretch uh, normally around sort of eight or seven don't overstretch because you can always stretch it a bit later on so I'm going to stretch it just to seven and we can now see our stars and we click apply okay now stars I've got some color in them but it would be nice to enhance the color a bit so I go to color saturation and increase this until the stars have the level of color that you want to see uh, that might be too much around sort of there looks pleasing and click apply so that's our star mask finished completed so we save that okay it doesn't auto save these steps you need to save them yourself so that's our stars sorted out so now let's open up our starless image which is our nebula we could run another noise reduction on that i generally find it's not needed um, the next thing i generally do is is we now want to stretch this image we click on generalized hyperbolic stretch again you'll see it's gone completely black we make sure we're set back to a generalized hyperbolic transform and we stretch and now this is where you'll go through several iterative steps of changing the amount that you want to stretch the symmetry point which is actually which bit of which sort of saturation level are you trying to stretch if I click a box around for example that area there and click on the eyedropper that sets my symmetry point to there and I could apply that as a first stretch as we're starting to see the the image appear I will then do another stretch now you can also slide the symmetry point until you get to the, the point where you're you're stretching what you want to stretch I'm particularly interested in bringing out these particular bright areas on the edges here so I'll play with the symmetry point until I start seeing those highlighting and apply this is an iterative process you're going to go through several steps of doing this till you get to the point where you'll see the image you want to see you can intensify the stretch just in the area that you've set the symmetry point to by using the local stretch intensity now this isn't a full tutorial on gh transform uh, there are plenty of other articles on how to follow this process i'll click apply on that again and i think i'll probably do one more stretch by setting this symmetry point and that i think is actually looking pretty reasonable i'll apply that what we are left with though is a very grey background and what we can then do is go to a linear stretch and set our black point to the point where the clip value shown here is zero so I've gone slightly beyond zero if you click minus you'll see that's gradually reducing and I like to set it at zero that gives me as dark a background as I can get without losing any information in the picture and I'll click apply on that and close so that's our GX stretch what we can now do is remove the green noise we t always try to do remove green noise as late in the process as possible and if we apply that we saw very little change there wasn't much green noise left in this image finally we might want to make the colors a bit brighter so we get into color saturation and we can we we'll go all the way here and it, that is way too saturated again you're finding a level where you're happy with the result and for me i think that looks about right and we'll click apply so that's step 14 color saturation we can then save that and now we need to bring the stars back into our image so we go to image processing star processing star recomposition and on the background we select our starless image and on the star stretch we pick our star mask image and what that does is recombine the two images now if you want to do additional stretch here if you want the stars even brighter you can adjust them even further here but if you've got the stretch right in the first place then that's a good enough result and on that you just press close there the object is combined now you'll see up here it says unsaved star recomposition result 
so that hasn't been saved. So we will do a save as, and I tend to just call it star recomposition result. And we'll save that. Finally, you might want to export it as a PNG file or a JPEG. We do save as again, and down here we change it to be a PNG file and click Save. And that's our final image in Cyril. We can now close those two down. The last bit I like to do is uh, I, I put an overlay over the top. And the overlay I use looks like this in GIMP. Now this is available on the Facebook group. Got a new version. And all I'm, I'm applying here is a circular overlay. And all you do, we go back to where we saved our PNG file, and we drag that at the at the lowest level. We keep the colours as they are, and then we can then go in here and, and actually fill in details of the name of the object, the date we took it, how many items are in the stack, and so on. But that's our final image. At that point. We can then do a file, export, and export that as a PNG file. And we export. Close that. We won't bother saving. So if we then look in here in our telescope view, that is our final image. And that's how you process a single FITS file in Cyril.